Listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. Once again, how y'all doing this late Friday evening? This is the Club of the Man 1993. I'm back here for another pre-recorded video. Again, wish I could be live, but again, I just got a lot going on. So I just need to go to this flow this week. Um, but this is my review of this week's episode of SmackDown. The March 22nd, 2024 edition. And it took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We had the um, the second bracket of the uh, SmackDown's tournament to crown which two teams will be in the uh, the ladder match, the six man, the six pack challenge ladder match at WrestleMania for the tag titles. We had we had the Cody Rhodes and Roman Fate Roman face Roman Reigns face to face confrontation. Now, I will say, at this point, it's not the match that's going to matter. It's the moment that needs to happen that's going to matter more. That's what I'm going to say based off of when it comes with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. That's what I think I'm more excited for. The draw for WrestleMania this year, no doubt about it at this point to me is the tag match on night one with Roman and Rock versus Seth and Cody. That is more personal. And to me, it's just going to make or break Cody, I feel like, for what he has to... It's either um, it's either he's got Roman in the palm of his hands night two, or he is going to have a legitimate nightmare. On night two of WrestleMania. We'll just have to wait and see of course. What exactly comes for Cody Rhodes. Uh, we got you know a little bit further. You know some more you know development. With the women's title picture. With Bailey and Damage Control. We had AJ Styles. Get his house invaded by LA Knight. And LA Knight was arrested. But AJ Styles did not press charges. So we had some stuff that happened tonight. But I'm going to keep saying this. It's obvious at this point that SmackDown just isn't. It's, it's passable. It's been a show that like it's telling the stories. It's doing what it has to do. But I feel like everything else is just getting overshadowed by the stuff with Cody and The Rock. And nothing else is like coming anywhere close to it, I feel like. Could it be the fact that we have two part-time champions? Yes. Are we getting a lot of rematches? Yes. Kevin Holmes, Randy Orton, and... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who lost to Terry Grayson Waller? Which we didn't have that tonight, but it definitely feels like that SmackDown is unfortunately the weaker of the two shows. Like Raw has a lot more intrigue to me, honestly, than SmackDown. I mean, again, it's not bad, but it's not really must see, in my opinion. It's getting the job done, but is it really like popping that much I don't know but you'll be the judge let's roll in and talk about this show as the show opened up 
with the one-on-one match between Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. A match that we thought we were going to get at WrestleMania. Still may happen, but maybe a different way. I don't know. But the match, you can tell that that there's still, there's definitely more to the story to come. Well, not just because of the ending. But this felt like, we've seen them have a couple one-on-one matches before. When they were both faces. It was friendly competition match. This is that match where... I'm not saying it wasn't a match, but again, it felt like just a brawl, like a brawl segment. Like it went on for a couple minutes. Uh, it was good, but you just had that feeling watching the match that this isn't going to be like the definitive end to this. This is feels like something it's setting up something more to come, which it did great, but um. When Ray basically had Santos in the palm of his hands, though, someone in a mask came and came out of the crowd and tripped him. I'm not going to lie. I at first thought it was Dragon Lee. But then when the camera got, got, got a full uh, view of the face under the mask, you knew it was him. It was Dominic Mysterio. Because Nick Aldis announced earlier that... For this match, the LWO and Legato Del Fantasma are both banned from ringside. And Dominic's not part of either one of them. Seeing Santos and Dominic, though, work together, though, was a nice pairing. Again, they both are doing excellent work as heels. I mean, I know they're on separate shows now. I don't know if this will lead eventually maybe to them... Being a tag team after Judgment Day. I don't know what it's going to do. But I do think this should be a long term thing. Santos and Dominic. Um, but of course that leads to Ray getting distracted. And Santos hitting the Phantom Driver on um, Ray to get the victory. So how whatever happens next we'll have to wait and see. But Naomi is backstage chat with Bailey. And Bailey thanks her for having her side. And Naomi says she's just trying to do the right thing. And Io is going to feel her tonight. It's not an awkward saying. But Bianca rolls up and criticizes Bailey trying to make good. After, of course, all damage control has put Bianca through the past two years. And keep in mind, again, this goes back even further to 2021 when Bianca and Bailey first feuded as well before Bailey got hurt. But anyways, Naomi breaks though, trying to calm them down. And she's like, Bianca, come with me. We're, we're going to have a little bit of a chat. So they go and have a chat. And Naomi tells Bianca, your feelings are valid. And she can't change the past. But she also knows she has her back. And she can't do this by herself. And neither could Bianca. Which Bianca's like, I understand. Which basically the gist was... I would help you, but I wouldn't help Bailey, is what I got from the gist, basically. And of course, it was um, dealt with later on in the show. But first, we got to talk about this next match real quickly here, which was Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus the OC. First off, Austin Theory's theme song got modified. Not gonna lie, I did like the original version better. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't know. Um, and then there's the Good Brothers, who hasn't really been used. I mean, I'm seeing they're doing some stuff on NXT right now. What they're doing, I have no clue. But I just expected so much more from them. I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't know if like the OC in general is officially split from AJ or the, the plan is to eventually get them with AJ. I don't know. But this match was meh. Like I said, it wasn't... Again, because you know the fact that I just don't think they're really given a serious direction for the Good Brothers. You have to throw them in a tournament. And... Um, Despite the fact that I don't think they should be splitting, 
I'm still not really the biggest Austin Theory and Grayson Waller fan either. The only good thing about this match, the best thing I enjoyed from this match, was when Mia Yim did that hip toss on Grayson Waller. Which, that was awesome. But that was the only thing that I really thought was awesome about this match. But Austin Theory and Grayson Waller do win, and they'll face the winner of the match later on between the Street Profits and the Final Testament. Which will address the Final Testament as well. When we get there as well. So yeah. Gals and Anderson lost yet again. I so miss the Gals and Anderson we got in 2016. Before they they became doctors diagnosing people with ring postitis. I miss. I, I, I miss. I, oh my gosh. I just. Yeah. They might, might be another thing where it's like. You know. The ship has sailed basically. But. It is what it is. Uh, we also got a uh, commercial recap of Roman Reigns appearing on the Pat McAfee show earlier in the, in the day. Um, and then we're supposed to get EO Sky versus Bailey next. I mean, EO Sky versus Naomi next. Naomi came out. Damage Control came out. But there was no EO. And I'm like, where the hell is EO? Until we see backstage that on her way out, EO decided to beat down... Bailey. So basically, Bailey was out of the equation, and Io and Naomi had a good match. wasn't too bad. Um, eventually, though, Dan Schroll, of course, to interfere, and um, Io does hit the moonsault off the top rope. Afterwards, they start beating down on Naomi, um, and Asuka, of course, mists in Naomi's face. And then Bianca tried to make the save, uh, and of course, they overwhelmed the baby faces, though. So, no Bailey though, because Bailey couldn't come out because she got beaten down. But, you know, they're building some type of, a, of like a. Well, Bianca probably will somehow eventually be in Bailey's corner. Even though, again, I'm pretty sure it's to eventually have Bianca turn heel. Um, because, you know, the crowd loves Bailey now, not her. I'm just still wondering who that fourth person is going to be though. I, I feel like there has to be a fourth person. To kind of like even up the odds. Of course, we may um, have that answer. I still think there's a chance it could be Jay Cargill. Because speaking of which, Jay Cargill uh, had a had a vignette, and so did Braun Breaker as well on the show. But Jay Cargill had a vignette where she makes it official. She's officially signed with SmackDown, and next week she will be making her first appearance. Which will be the only appearance she's made besides a couple backstages is when she was in the Women's Royal Rumble. So yeah, I want, again, because of that backstage altercation of um, interaction she had with Io a few weeks ago, I wonder if maybe if, maybe if Jade will be the fourth member, like, like the fourth person to kind of like side with Bailey here. Um, I still wish we would have gotten a match with her and Bianca though, but it'll come some point. It will. Um, we have a backstage with Kevin Owens, talking with Nick Aldis, pretty deadly roll up and complain about a conspiracy against them since they're not going to WrestleMania because they lost their tag match. KO then says, you know what? You want a tag match? Fine. I'll challenge you to a match next week against my partner. Who's your partner? And Randy Orton was like standing like right next to them and basically Orton appears out of nowhere and asks Kev and he's like, yeah, I'll team with you. And pretty and uh, pretty deadly um is like they're getting complimented by Randy Orton about Elton Prince's jacket and this is like his own dad used to wear and then him and Owens walk away and then um and then he then he comes back and punches both of them in the face so there's no really progression in the story with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton going to be buddies until WrestleMania the Triple Threat. Makes me think that Logan Paul is retained, which I'm pretty sure they want to keep the belt on Logan a little bit longer. Again, especially with that prime, um, what's called that prime sponsorship thing they're doing with him now. But, you know, you can tell like, the first, some of the stuff I just didn't really care for on the show. Not that I thought it was bad. It was just like, it, like it, it was what it was. What I did like, though, was this, um, this home intervention I'm sorry, this home invasion thing 
um, as AJ Styles was being interviewed at his home for getting ready for his match for WrestleMania, when there's a honking horn and AJ goes outside and LA Knight's there and they start fighting. Then the police roll up and arrest LA Knight for, of course, trespassing. Um, and, of course, AJ attacked him while being cuffed and the, the cops push him back, but do not arrest AJ. And then apparently um, AJ Styles did not press charges and LA Knight was released from custody. So, you know, that was a fun little segment there to progress that storyline. Um, we then have the Street Profits versus the Authors of Pain and yet another tag match. The match was decent, which although I was a little confused because when the Street Profits first came out, they played their old theme song, the ba- their, their babyface song. But then when they won the match, which they did, they played their heel theme song. That was a little bit confusing. Also, by the way, I did listen to um, Chris Van Vliet's podcast recently um, where he interviewed AJ Francis, former, of course, known as Top Dalla. And he mentioned how tall B Fab was. I never realized how tall she was. In heels, she's like six foot one. And of course, when she was standing there with Bobby Lashley during the Street Profits entrance, she was almost as tall as Bobby Lashley. And Bobby's three and six three. I was almost at three three. That's being too short. Six foot three. But um the match was decent. It was you could tell they were well, Street Profits win. You can tell that they were kind of trying to like. I was getting vibes of like AOP's like NXT matches with like, you know, uh, DIY or like the Revival or I think they had a few with Undisputed Era. I think I can't remember. But the matches where they were dominating monsters, but they were also making the other team look like strong against them as well. But it felt like they were still like holding back a little. And the Street Profits win. And I was kind of like, is anybody else besides me already starting to lose a little bit of faith in the Final Testament? Because what really have they done? Like, to me, it still feels like Karrion Cross is still eating the L's. Authors of Pain have only had like one or two matches. Like, I feel like there's nothing moving forward yet. Unless if this is a thing where... You know, they're trying to like say, hey, they're here, but we're going to, we're going to, you know, go further with this after WrestleMania or something. I don't know. Like, I just thought that, you know, there seems like to be a plan. Like, this is different. It's unique. But why does it feel like it's not really moving forward? You know, I don't know. I'm just starting to worry that maybe it's just something that it's just, there's just no room for carrying cross in WWE. But we'll see when it gets there. Street Profits do win. They will take on Austin Theory and Grayson Waller next week. And then also Legado Del Fantasma will take on the new Catch Republic to see which two teams will represent SmackDown in the latter match at WrestleMania. Backstage, Paul Heyman is shown calling Roman Reigns and telling him that Cody Rhodes has, is, is here and he is alone. So they make their entrances. And Roman says, The wise man made a promise and a tribal chief kept his word. That he's here alone, aside of Haman, who is no physical threat. Cody Rhodes then comes out. Roman's like, you're here alone? And Cody's like, I'm just a man of my word as you are. And Roman then... You see, like, here's where I, I, I just, I started to think, like, you know, who cares about the match at Mania? Let's c- care more if the moment happens. Because Rowan starts calling Cody an idiot and runs down his actions the last month or so, especially how he aligned with Seth Rollins. Where was Seth for him on Monday? Well, okay, I didn't say that I, I'm not saying that I hate it. I, I like the fact that they're still mentioning that Seth and Cody still have baggage with each other. And Roman's trying to get in his head about that. Uh, saying how he felt like him and Seth had a bond and then what happened? Rollins stabbed him in the back. 
And what does Cody think is going to happen? That's why Cody's a fool to trust Seth Rollins. Because Rollins referring to whatever Seth Rollins first betrayed the Shield. Cody says, of course he remembers the Shield. They are unstoppable. But who is the team, the first team that beat them? He'll give him a hint. The last name was Rhodes. He got his bullet uh, cufflinks on. And he knows a thing or two about factions and betrayal. The blood, bloodline in a faction. They're a family above all. So can he trust Seth? He asks the crowd and they're on board. And says Rollins might hate his guts. But he knows that Rollins hates Roman more. And they basically have a common enemy. Cody asks Roman though. Can you trust The Rock? Who's really in charge of the bloodline? The tribal chief for the final boss. Again, trying to get into his head too. So, there's some merit to this promo. But like I said, I, I going from, you know, them basically trying to admit that can neither, either of them really trust their partners. It's just again showing that the more important match, honestly, is the tag match. The match, again, Roman and Cody don't have to have the other classic. I get, I feel like... It's not going to be about the match at Mania. It's going to be about the moment. That's just why I think it's going to be more important. Like you know, we're not, I don't think we're going to get a match close to what happened last year. I think again, it's just going to be a moment that we just have to see. Um, Reigns, of course, has a giggle about it and paces, stroking his beard for saying that's old, and points out Cody asks Rock the same thing the other way. He calls Cody a politician and asks if he's running for governor before saying he keeps making promises he can't bring for Trishan because he's number two. With respect, everyone else here would be lucky to be number two. And Cody's the greatest number two of all time. But that's all he'll ever be because Roman's number one forever. Cody admits, Cody says he wants to get real here. They both grew up in this industry Little kids looking in the mirror, dreaming of being the biggest star in pro wrestling. He mentions names like Bruno, um, Flair, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Stokely Boston, John Cena. And he's pretty sure their kids, the next generation, will want to be the next Roman Reigns. And that's his destiny. But as far as Cody goes, when it comes to who beats Roman... He's not number two. He's number one. And then he wishes Roman good luck at WrestleMania. It's like, why are we... I saw that and I'm like, why is it still at that stage? It shouldn't be. Like, again, this is much more... Should be much more personal now. But again, it's more personal with Cody Rhodes and The Rock... But not so Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Again, this is, again, I get at this point, the beef more is not with Cody Reigns and, Ro Cody Reigns, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. The beef is more so with the people who are guarding Roman Reigns. And that's why, again, I feel like, again, listening to this promo, like, what we got on Monday with Cody and the how personal the promo got. I wanted that with this. Instead, we kind of just got a reminder, hey, you know, Roman, you may have these guys, but I have these guys. Can we trust each other? Yes. That basically was the, what this promo was. Because after, of course, all that happens, uh, and they step out of the ring, because uh, Cody, like, Roman didn't want to shake Cody's hand. He thought he was ridiculous with that. I thought Cody was kind of ridiculous with that, too. He gets out of the ring and then Solo and Jimmy come through the crowd. But then Jay and Seth come through the crowd. And the show just ends with the six of them staring each other down. So I'm like, okay, that was fine. But didn't really get me a little more fired up like Monday's promo did. But again, it was a solid show. Again, I, I would have said decent, but... Again, I think what kind of pushed me over decent was again I did like that that segment with LA Knight and AJ Styles. Um the stuff with L with not LW with um Ray and Santos with Dominic, I, I like, you know. I do 
I like, you know, that, you know, the, like, it's, I still think, like, the match itself with Bailey and Io still feels like it's, like, a backseat, but I do like they're teasing that Bailey is getting people to, you know, stand next to her, because, again, who can really trust Bailey after all she's done the past few years? And, you know, they're teasing, you know, like, some truth. Like, I, so there's some truth in that storyline there with, with, like, you know, tr- you know Naomi trying to get Bianca to help, too. Um, I do like, think, like, that's caused it to be a little more interesting than it should be. Um, but, yeah, like, the tag matches, most of them, I both of them I wasn't really the biggest fan of. Again, Mia Yim's hip toss was definitely the best thing. And like I said, I just I'm starting to worry a little bit about the final testament. But again, a few things I thought was, was you know like where it needed to be. I gave the show a B a B minus. I almost gave it a C plus, but I gave it a B minus. It felt like you know it's like things made sense. It's just like it's not like oh my gosh. It's just like makes sense. Cool with me. That's all it is. So guys, a B minus for SmackDown this week. What are your guys' thoughts on SmackDown? Leave your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below. Be sure also, as always, to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content to come to my channel. You may also follow me on Twitter at the Club of the Man 93, and also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. And until then, guys, I'm checking it out. I'll catch you guys all later. Have a great rest of your night. Have a great weekend, and do not forget. In order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am the man himself. And that is not just an opinion, my friends. That is a fact of life. Yeah!